Okay, mom wanted to see a tour of my base and the game that I've been playing. This is the game. This is my base. I'm the little thing moving around in the uh, middle of the screen with the flashlighty. Wee. So, let's start from coal. We have we're, we're getting to coal eventually. Maybe. Okay, we're going to start from copper because I can't find the coal thing right now. So, this is copper. These things mine copper. This is oil. Alright, so we're following the copper. Copper goes into this thing right here, which is underground bell. Goes over here. This up here is sulfur. I use that to make uh, sulfuric acid. It comes from my oil production. My oil production is over here. I currently have it on advanced oil processing, so I get more uh, gas, essentially. Here is the copper. Now, on the right side, I have a mix of uh, coal and iron, which is making iron plates. On the left side, the copper is being mixed over here, because it goes through here to an underground belt up here, over there, and then up here, and then back down here. It also goes to another place I have copper coming in from up there. And it goes down through here, makes copper plates. Copper plates come out here. This is called my main bus. So currently on the, the main bus, we see on our left some iron plates going into a gear factory, which is making gears. And that's going to be shortly added to the bus. And now we have uh, copper and iron plates as we go up. We have red science over there we're making circuit boards up here and now the gears have gotten on the uh, the bus and then this is um, belts on belts making belts <laughs> and that's red science so that's all on the bus there's green science being made and it goes over here where it gets combined with the red science and the, these are my factories that produce research so I can upgrade my stuff and do new things. And down here, we see plastic is coming up here. It's made with coal and gas, and batteries are over to the left. I don't have very much battery production, I'm going to have to increase that. We have some more plates being made over there, which is copper plates, which then go underground, go back to the bus over here to supplement the uh, iron plates that are being used. And back onto the bus. So green chips are getting siphoned off up here to make solar panels. Here we have steel, which we neglected to mention was down left being made from iron plates, which is making uh, armor piercing ammo. Up here we have uh, an awful lot of uh, red chips, which are made by green chips and those copper plates we were talking about. This is a train. Choo-choo! Choo-choo-choo-choo-choo! Oh. Okay, well, the track isn't really done yet. This is where um, the great incident, incident of day 233 happened, where Steve ran me over with a train, because I wasn't paying attention. I was w looking at something else, trying to figure out the logistics of something, and Steve, being the sneaky bastard he is made a train track that went right up to me and then put a train track right under me and ran me over with a damn train. It was a sad day. All right, blue chips, which take sulfuric acid and green chips and something else. And then we have inserters, which to make blue science. Blue science is a pain in the ass to make. Not quite as big of a pain in the ass as blue science. Here is laser towers. These, this is Ford Motor Company. This was generously donated and constructed by Steve, which is great job he did on Ford Motor Company. That would be his, his masterpiece, I think. This right here is a logistics drone port or a robo port. It's called Toya Akira. I'm not entirely sure why. It was built by, well, Ball Buster, but that's Johnny. Um, apparently I did these. What did Johnny do? Johnny did these, right? Created by... 
Yes, I think the, the uh, blue science was created by Johnny, which he did a pretty good job on that. And let's see, what else are we going to show you? Oh, we'll show you the power production. So I'm going to zoom out again. It's nighttime. It'll get uh, brighter during daytime. We have a light over there that uh, I think Johnny was scared of the dark and he was complaining. So I made him a, a nightlight. So there, here's where all the ore is coming from. This is a crazy convoluted mess. It was one of our first things we made. and goes all over the place and gets used for a bunch of things. Now, over here, the coal goes down into here. This is a boiler. The boiler uh, gets coal in it. Then the next inserter arm takes the coal from the first boiler and puts it to the second one. And so on and so forth all the way down the line. And this is water going through these pipes. And they power these steam engines which give me electricity. Here's a holding tank. Uh, this is the pump where the water eventually er, originally comes from. And here is my secondary system for uh, power generation, which is also powered by coal. As you can see, it goes up the line. And here's more steam power generators. All right, now for the good stuff. This is a tertiary uh, iron thing. I'm pretty sure... Nope, I made that one. I thought it was Johnny. Apparently not. Yep, Johnny made uh, this one though. Jab, that's his name. So I don't know who made the other one. It's Johnny's Jab. Um, oh, he's both of those names. So here's a really long belt. This is the other one that uh, Johnny also made. And... Uh, He's really good at the mining. He does a lot of the mining. And these long belts. Really long belts. It's kind of big. As you can see to our left, that is Trump Wall. That is the left side of Trump Wall. And here we are to the last ore factory. Oh, and here's a little uh, oil pump. It eventually goes the whole way back into the main base. Underground pipes. And here is the right side of right bottom side of Trump Wall. Now, we're going to bring you to the Maginot Line. Which is, uh, oh, there's a tank. Let's take a tank to the Maginot Line. Be a little quicker. There we go. I'm in a tank. These wonderful little designs are by Johnny. Those are a uh, power uh, pylon mixed with, uh, I just gotta check because I think I might have ran over a pipe that I needed. No, does not look like I did. Um, those are a long distance power line that is surrounded by one, two, three, a bunch of uh, laser turrets. You can see that we uh, took those down here. Sorry, I almost ran into something. The tank does not, I repeat, does not drive very well. So the Maginot line continues to go over to the left, but... Uh, I'm going to cut down through here and go through this little forest. No need to slow down. Okay, I guess I'm going to slow down a, lot, a little bit. There's there's some trees there. And since I'm in a tank, I have these little bots that are coming out of me that keep repairing. We have a bunch of untapped resources over here that we're going to have to use at some point. Alright. So, we're nearing the end of the Maginot Line. And you might notice that to our left is a bunch of underground pipes. That is because the resource we were looking for... Let's see if I can get through here without dying. And to the left, that is the main brunt of the Maginot Line. Um, which is our defensive perimeter to the left. To the right, we are not currently protected. So, I'm going to hop out of my tank. What we did is we put a bunch of these little turret bases around. And they will protect us from the inevitable swarms of bad guys. Uh, these are some solar panels and uh, oil, Derek. We seem to be uh, oil pumps. We seem to be losing oil pretty rapidly, and that seems to be our main concern. So, if you look on the over map, this is our pollution. Wherever that stuff is right here, 
uh, that means that we're kind of screwing up the environment. So you can see up here that it's kind of overlapping these other little red dots. That means that they're going to come attack us every once in a while. I am right there. And as you can see, the Maginot line goes all the way up there and then connects to Trump Wall. Trump Wall extends all the way over there and then all the way up there. And that is right there, my pretty much my entire base. Zoom all out. And this map goes on infinitely as long as you want. So our current next plan is we are going to take a line and we're going to take it from this water feature right here all the way over probably to this one and depending on what's over there because we can't see it yet. Um, so that we can encapsulate these oil things right here and right there and then uh, eventually wipe out all of... Uh, the biters over here. Now I'm going to show you some biters and hopefully not die. So I'm kind of a wimp so I'm going to run back to here whenever I uh, seem to think I'm going to die. I'm going to put on my automatic shotgun with piercing round ammo. I'm going to run over here and oh there we go and then I'm going to piss off these guys. There they are. Shooting at them with a shotgun. Now I have some pretty nice shield so apparently they're not going to do much damage but I can't really kill them very easily see so I'm just going to walk right over here and they all disappear vaporized by lasers it's kind of fun if you get bored you can just walk over here and then walk back but unless I kill these bases right here like that they will just keep coming infinitely so you have to kill those bases. So what I do is Johnny usually comes behind me and I go over there and then I run back to here. He puts down some of these little base that turret things which takes care of them very easily as you can see. Just go right into the meat grinder. Usually I'd have Johnny follow me and he just put like one right here and then just keep going till we got the whole way here so I wouldn't have to run away as fast and uh, a lot less likelihood of me dying. But with this new upgrade armor, it's a little bit easier. Well, I think that about shows... Well, not even half or a quarter of the game. But, that's all I'm doing for today. Maybe. If I can turn out how, figure out how to turn this off.